Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks for coming, everybody. Summer is here. And then some. Uh, roll call, please. Sandy Kufo. Here. Crystal Regan. Here. Christy Hilton. Here. Artie Bryson. Here. Cindy Valentine. Here. Joanne Shirky. Here. Mark Burchard. Here. Okay, we're all present and accounted for. First, we have a couple public hearings to do. Um, first one is a public hearing on our 2018-19 budget. I will entertain a motion to open up for public hearing. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing for the 2018-19 budget. Support. Motion to support. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. At, at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Um, <clears throat> we can open it up uh, if anyone has any public comments about our proposed 1819 budget. Um, you can come up forward. I can give you a quick rundown. Um, basically, with all the departments and uh, um, throughout the whole township, uh, which we have 31 of them, believe it or not. Uh, our total budget is $10,297,834. And with this proposed budget out of that, we'll, we're forecasting to put over $400,000 back in the fund balance dispersed between all the, all the different departments. So, uh, that's it in a nutshell. Any public comments on anything? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for the 2018-19 budget at 7.01. Support. Motion to support, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone oppose? Okay, motion carries. Next, we have a public hearing on the Lazy Lane Special Assessment. I will entertain a motion. Make a motion at 702 to open the public hearing for Lazy Lane. Support. We have motion and support. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh -huh. Anyone against? Motion carries. Is that rain out there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to, uh, anyone has any uh, questions about the Lazy Lane special assessment? Um, basically, they, uh, it's for road maintenance. And uh, was it three thousand a year? That I, yeah, and um, and it's good, uh, for three or five five years, and uh, we're gonna they're gonna use the money for maintaining the road, um, plowing and putting gravel down if needed. So, anyone here for Lazy Lane? Come on up and and state your name and. How's it going? Good, Artie. Good. Jim Hansen, and my wife and I have taken over the duties of road maintenance for Lazy Lane. Uh, the previous person that had done it had uh, passed away and her daughter had moved out of town. So we're designated. Uh, our alternate will be uh, Kurt Stump. And uh, the amount of the assessment is a little higher than last year because we were always out of money. Uh, in fact, we have a bill outstanding right now that can't be paid with the balance in there. So there's no questions. That's all I had. Okay. Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for stepping up too. Any more public comments on Lazy Lane? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close public hearing at? 704. 704. Support. Motion to support. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have uh, bills payable. Entertain a motion to pay some bills. 
I'll make a motion for bills payable in the amount of $135,526.46. Support. Okay, yeah, motion and support. Any discussion, questions? Nope. Nope. Okay, hearing none. Uh, roll call vote. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Artie Bryson. Yes. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Sandy Kufo. Yes. Okay, motion passes. <clears throat> Moving right along. Now we have public comments. Any public comments on anything? Want to talk smack about the clerk? You can. The parents. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. No public comments. Okay. Uh, next we have the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the board meeting minutes of June 4th, 2018 and synopsis, check reports, building and zoning reports, code enforcement report, a notice that in observance of the 4th of July, the offices will be closed July 4th and 5th, and the weekly road watch communication from the county. Support. Motion support. We, uh, everyone good with the consent agenda? We're going to include uh, assessing in the reports, right? Yes. Okay. I don't know if I didn't hear that or... Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor of the consent agenda on, is on the agenda. <laughs> Signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next is the supervisor's report. And let's see. It's been busy. Uh, Colony Water Main Project bids went out Friday, and uh, we're going to open the the bids. It's, it's about 1.5, 1.4 million dollar water main replacement uh, project on the Colony Road. And uh, we're going to basically hook on to where it is on M29 and go under the canal and tie it in with at the end of Anchor Bay Drive. And uh, it's a special assessment. They'll all be paid for it right now. It's a private water line. And once it's brought up to snuff and we're put in fire hydrants, then they'll we get turned over to the municipal, you know, town, the township's uh, water system. But uh, so everyone knows, uh, Bids are due back July 10th, and we'll award it on or before July 16th. And it has a start date. Uh, it can start anytime in August with uh, completion of by November 9th, before deer hunting season. Okay, uh, I'm happy to say the firefighters ratified their uh, the Michigan Association of Firefighters Union contract, and they'll. That's on our agenda, so I'll leave the rest for that. Um, on June 13th, last uh, week, I presented uh, to the DNR Trust Fund, Grant, grant Fund uh, Board, for, uh, wrote a grant for the DNR Trust Fund to help us purchase, they'll, they'll purchase 75% of uh, property for, uh, it's, it's property, vacant land, on the Crispin Blue Way Trail, the Crispin Drain, and we're going to buy it with the intention of doing uh, kayak and uh, launch and a bike trailhead park. It's going to have a nature walk, uh, observation tower, and uh, handicap uh, kayak launch. <clears throat> uh, presented to them, and it went very, very well. Um, they they did all but say it's it funded it there. They they basically said it was going to be funded, but on an interesting uh, side note on that, uh, I actually got to I sat next to Kurt Seidel, who's the director of MDOT, and uh, we had a, about a half hour very candid conversation about bike trails and bike paths, and <clears throat> about getting a. a some bike uh, paths along M29 and on I M154 on the island. And uh, so he uh, gave me a lot of good information, helpful information and contacts with that. Um, 
and keep going forward with the, the, the property on the DNR trust fund. June 25th, Monday, we're having an on-site walk with a couple of their grant coordinators on the property. I'll meet them there a uh, week from today on Monday at noon. And we'll walk the property with them so they can see it. And then also, uh, just this Wednesday, <clears throat> I'm intending uh, SEMCOG University uh, seminar, day-long seminar, designing bicycle-friendly roadways. It's going to be downtown Detroit, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, um, meeting. Um, we are going to, we don't, we don't know the exact date yet, but we're going to have an open house for our fire department on the island station. Uh, we were looking at the July 14th, but, and do it right after their homeowners association meeting, but that they rescheduled that meeting because it conflicts with their car show. Um, we're either going to do it on Wednesday night or, or a Saturday. Uh, we're going to be determined yet with Chief. But we thought be, there's a lot of interest over there on the island. We thought it would be nice to open up the station, do a three, four hour uh, open house uh, where we can show people exactly what we're going to do with the station and uh, some of the trucks that we're going to uh, replace if the bond is passed. So I'll let everybody know when that is, and of course, everyone will be welcome. <clears throat> um, the DDA voted uh, last week, Tuesday, to replace our electronic sign out in front of the hall. It needs some work and updating software and, and uh, electronics on it. But what, what, were they, what they're going to do, they're going to replace the one out there with a, a nice cold, a cold color LED light with a new facade all around it that matches our building and they're going to take the existing one refurbish it and put a nice structure around it and give it to the fire hall out in front there so they'll have their own electronic uh sign in fr front of there and it, it's you know it'd be good to everyone drive down that road for the high school and everything um and the dda also improved to go ahead with eight foot uh, wide sidewalk slash bike path from fruit long fruit road and it's going to go from island drive down to nook it's going to be uh eight foot wide asphalt and uh they gave me the directive to go ahead and start the engineering and uh acquiring easements if there's any easements to be uh, had for the uh sidewalk <clears throat> and an offshoot of that <clears throat> this last friday night I, um, I was invited to speak to the Boy Scouts, uh, Troop 252, and which I did. It was very good. And I don't know if you recall, it, I had a, two, they, they wanted me to tell them about what, what, what's involved in being a good citizen and, and their constitutional duties of a citizen. But uh, I don't know if you guys recall, about six months ago there at one of our board meetings, and what did they say? They said, we want sidewalks and we want one on Fruit Road. <clears throat> and uh, so I tied it in and it's true. They were at our meeting and they said, you know, are, are they told the board, we'd like to see a sidewalk. And, and I was, it was so great to, to tell them, well, you know what? It was just approved two or three nights before that. And it was from your idea. And they got all big smiles. And I think we should name that Troop uh, 252 sidewalk after them or, or, or kind of recognize them for that because you know they got the ball rolling on that project <clears throat> so I thought that was way cool uh, we did our uh, plant tour of the uh, Elgnac water plant today and also we he didn't hit on it too much but there's a a, a group through a SEMCOG put together it's called the Heron to Erie um, water uh, water corridor and basically it's involved all the drinking water plants from the mouth of the St. Clair River or the, the top of the uh, St. Clair River the mouth all the way down to Lake Erie <clears throat> and um, we're good we did have some monitoring systems <coughs> in place some kind got got really involved and 
Primera cost 14,000 per, per station to put it in, and then we were monitoring it, and, and we still have it going on this station, but, uh, uh, or this plant, but other plants actually pulled theirs out. I know St. Clair did, I believe Marine City did, and, uh, but they're getting that program fired up again, and we're gonna get in, be putting new modules in, and all the water plants, and what it does, if there's a, a spill or, or something in the river, it should detect it. And so, and alarms go off to all the water plants in this area. So if something hits Marysville, our plant will be notified and we'll be able to shut down from take, taking in water until whatever it is goes past us. Um, it, it's, I mean, it, this program only really it costs five thousand a year, and uh, when you spread that over how many uh, people this water plant services, it's, it's like I don't know sixty cents per person per year. I mean, you don't you just do it, you know? Makes sense to make sure we have uh, clean water. But uh, I want to mention that to everybody. Uh, there's been a couple meetings on that, and we have one next week. And I did meet with. Uh, AT&T regarding small cell towers. Um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on this. They, uh, what these are, they're basically 18 to 24 inch high antennas, and, and they install them 30, 35 feet uh, high off of like existing DTE poles, uh, they can do it on structures or, or anything else. And they're looking at doing eight of them on Harsons Island along South Channel Drive. They're gonna put one, maybe two in Elginac, and then they'll want more north of, north part of Clay, but they haven't gotten those yet. And um, basically, they we have to have an agreement from us allowing them to do this in our road right away. And we're the first ones in the county they've uh, talked to. Um, I've requested from MTA what other people or municipalities have uh, charged them. Some are uh, pretty pretty expensive, others are pretty cheap. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna do some research, see what the best deal is for clay. And um, also, there, there is a house bill of standardizing these small cell towers, with, what's being generated for income through the whole state. But that's still not approved yet. I'm, I'm, I have those numbers coming to us. This contract would supersede anything that, that the House does pass or, this, or, the, or Lansing does pass for the life of the contract. But uh, it's, it's going to take a little bit of work. and. Uh, We'll uh, get granular on exactly where they're going to go, what poles, and uh, that's that type of thing. And, it's, and what it basically is for is the next generation in cell cell uh, technology. Uh, I think we're at 4G now. There's actually going to be a 5G coming out. And also on this network will be uh, the automated cars, so how the cars can talk to each other. I will also be carried on this network. Um, it's a little bit Big Brother-ish, yeah. It's coming, so uh, we gotta we got to think about it and uh, make sure it, it's it's done right. So, um, just want to mention that it was it was an interesting meeting. I probably met with them a couple hours. So, FEMA's rearing their ugly head again. Uh, I, I did talk to them a little bit today. And actually, we, ha we do have this uh, a big workshop a month from today. And um, I have a link that I can email out to everybody. And I'll put it out on our website and social media on their new proposed floodplain maps. <clears throat> and what they are, are doing, they're taking into account wind-blown water. And uh, which... It is and isn't, isn't significant. That's kind of it back there. I know they tweaked it, but the yellow part is windblown water. And they take to account 
what the type of seawall you have, if it's, if it's a beach, um, if it's a soft shore, you know, quite a bit of things. And um, <clears throat> good news is they reduced the whole map of the, what's in the floodplain. And I asked them questions that I need to know how many structures are, are, that are now in the floodplain zone that are gonna be removed and how many structures are being uh, in, involved in this uh, new wind blown, I think they call it velocity zone. And uh, I know there's about 1,200 homes that's being removed from our floodplain zone. So, Good. Um, anybody knows me, I, I, I just hate the whole thing and, and we don't get, it's a money grab, but uh, yeah, there'll be more, of that, more coming on that in the next month. <clears throat> Music in the Park, June 21st in Nalaganap. We have Mystic Six, that's Thursday. July 5th, we have Mickey Meldrum and the Meldrum Brothers. Then we started doing things on Wednesday also. Uh, June 20th, we have uh, uh, a magic guy coming. Magical Andy Merck, is it? Marker? McCor. McCor. And July 11th, we have Guy Lewis and the Chattanooga Express. So good fun stuff going on there. And we have all kinds of programs going on, rec programs. There's actually, now there's too many to list. If you're on Facebook, like uh, if you like uh, Clay Township Parks and Rec Facebook page, they're all listed on there. So that's all I got today. We made it through. Not bad. All right, new business. Uh, first thing on the agenda is our proposal for our property liability insurance renewal with Nickel and Sapp. And I believe Steve's here. You want to do a quick rundown, Steve, and uh, if we have any questions. Thanks for coming out. Good evening. Um, Steve Saff, Jr. with Nickel and Saff Insurance. Um, Hopefully you have in front of you a couple of documents. Uh, number one, a letter from our office dated June 1st, which uh, gives a um, uh, overview of the uh, intended proposal. Uh, and then I don't know if uh, Supervisor uh, Bryson's communicated to you that during the course of drilling down after presented the numbers, found an error in the insurance company and saved you another five thousand dollars. So I, I didn't do that one. I thought I'd let you. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> we, um, we we presented the proposal. The insurance company gives us the numbers, and then Mr. Bryson came back and said, "I need you to break this down by department." So they send me this stack of paperwork that is such a joy to go through, and I couldn't get the numbers to 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 match up. So finally discovered that they had, instead of 31 autos, they covered too many autos. They weren't taking autos off that were being removed from the fleet. So we discovered that. So instead of a, um, uh, 11. the 111,900, you're at um, 5,684 dollars less, um, which is $106,216. So we are now a premium of $906 less than yet last year or a 0.85% reduction. Within the proposal, uh, there is a, um, a narrative from uh, the insurance company Trident. Uh, what we are affording here are your uh, commercial property and casualty coverages. Um, we're insuring um, uh, for terrorism coverage. We've included that. Um, after the events of 9-11, our country adopted a program similar that exists in uh, Great Britain where the English were worried about the Irish blowing buildings up. Their insurance companies don't like to pay claims any more than ours do, so they went to Parliament and asked for a, a backstop in case of a catastrophic incident and it became nothing more than a tax on the insurance. Within your policy, there's a fee of 1,378 that goes directly to the feds for catastrophic claims. 
now in Washington, they've amended the legislation a couple times. When it was first written in 2002, it was strictly foreign uh, terrorist acts. Now they've just defined it as, as a terrorist act. So, uh, for example, the Federal Mural Building in Oklahoma City a number of years ago, that was a domestic terrorist act. So if something like that happens, this is now part of the coverage, unfortunately. We live in an era that we have to do that. We do have those pesky Canadians. There you go, yeah, yeah. Um, we're providing coverage for general liability, which includes uh, the uh, fire department and the, uh, any coverage related to emergency medical services they afford. Uh, we're providing coverage for your fleet, including physical damage, comprehensive and collision, with uh, replacement cost on the uh, high-end uh, fire department vehicles for stated values. Uh, public officials, wrongful acts or allegations of wrongful acts or lack of action that those of you that are elected or appointed officials may or may not make. Um, we also include um, inverse condemnation. So if there's an allegation of taking, uh, you've, um, uh, you've got a, a private property owner that has a number of acres and he's going to sell it to a developer. And the developer comes in and says, I've got uh, 20 acres here and I want to build uh, 10 beautiful homes. And your planning department looks at this and says, you know, this is a great plan, but we don't want that density there. We only want to have seven homes. And the guy gets upset and he sues you because you've taken value of his land. So we have coverage uh, supplement in for that, which is uh, something that's rather unique with insurance carriers. <clears throat> uh, employment practices, wrongful termination, discrimination, harassment, we have coverage for that. Uh, law enforcement, the separate freestanding coverage for the uh, actions of your uh, police department. Um, within the, the cover letter, um, I made reference to um, uh, the second from last paragraph. The, the, the hot coverage right now is cyber liability. The insurance industry has um, taken a position where they've created this distinct and separate coverage. So what that means for you as a consumer is anything that you've traditionally purchased doesn't cover cyber liability. So they've created a, a, a separate form. And the form is like pollution liability in that it provides two kinds of coverages. It protects you for expenses that you incur if somebody hacks your systems or takes data from you. So you have to have internal expenses to create or to correct the problem. But then it also has coverage in case a third party comes to you and says, hey, you had my information in your care, custody, and control. You didn't protect it uh, properly. It got in the hands of a bad guy who hacked your system. Now I have expenses. So it's the first party expenses to help you correct the problem. And then there's third party expenses if someone comes against you for an outside attack and, and the fact that, or the allegation that the township didn't properly protect that personal identifying information of a party. Um, my personal opinion, um, if you're using a third party contractor, um, I recommend that uh, maybe uh, the supervisor and I sit down with that company to take a look at this first before you make a decision. Um, there might be some decision after the fact where there'd be a recommendation from the people that do this for you day in and day out. Um, but I don't think it's something that you need to um, uh, pull the trigger on tonight. Okay, and we do have a third party. Yeah, that's, you know, so. which is very common with most of my municipalities. Very, very few have in-house IT departments. And when you start talking to the third party vendors, the people that are providing these services, for uh, the public, you begin to learn and understand what protections, what they're dealing with, what they're providing you as part of the package of services. So uh, there becomes a greater sense of, of uh, comfort and confidence uh, in most cases that I've seen when talking to these third party vendors. So I, I, what I suggest is if, if you if you wouldn't mind, I'd be happy to sit down and we can kick the can with, with those folks and, and see what they, what they feel about it. That's great. 
<coughs> yeah, excuse me. Uh, yes. Would that cover uh, ransom? Uh, ransomware, yeah. It, okay. it, 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 it picks up, if you bear with me a moment. I thought you were worried about the I got kidnapped, Mark. <laughs> I, don't want, yeah, I don't want it to happen again. Back to those Canadians again. <laughs> Gladly pay up to two dollars. <laughs> Fifty cents. Canadian. Um, uh, <laughs> malware, forensic review, legal review, public relations, regulatory fines, um, data compromise, uh, network security, cyber extortion, uh, cyber attack. I think oh, extortion would cover it. Yeah. yeah. So they have those particular okay. um, coverages in, in included with this program. The one thing to keep in mind in this is that there is a sublimit of $100,000 for these coverages. Um, it's an evolving area right now. Um, I'm finding that insurance companies are, are you know, it's kind of interesting when an insurance company picks up you and says, hey, what's the other guy doing on this right now? So they're all, it's all kind of, of evolving coverage forms and, and prices. But uh, again, I think that it, it would make sense to print off a copy of the detail form, sit down with your guys and, and, and just, again, review it with them and then maybe come back at a later date. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly if something that you decided you wanted to secure, we could do it midterm. Uh, you're not bound by the renewal date of July 1st. We could do it at a later time. Did you say that was a $100,000 cap? Yes. Yeah. Um, higher limits are available, but um, it's, um, in my opinion, cost prohibitive. Great. Hey. Anybody have any more questions for Steve? Thank you. We've All been right. uh, with Nickel and Sad, what, third year now? This is our fourth. This is our fourth year. Fourth yeah, year so we, yeah, we're just closing out our third year. Yeah. And I think right now our premium is what we were paying before we switched to them four years ago. Good thing I found that mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think uh, four years ago we were paying about 115, 118 thousand a year. And you know, that, and that's a function of a variety of factors. Mm -hmm. um, I think the market for everything that we've seen, um, as far as name stores, storms in Florida, and all the headaches they've had in California, uh, the industry still has remained com very competitive. Um, you know, you listen to the the, the gurus, and um, I was a little bit concerned about what we thought we might be seeing for pricing, um, as far as potential increases. Um, but um, in the past, you know, they were always waiting for the first guy to, to come out with a rate increase and then they lined up right behind him. You know, these, this industry is so um, connected and so tight. You know, these guys know, you know, five minutes after the other guy does and they're waiting to, to, to play a card after that other guy does. All this stuff about actuaries and, and all this detail has a lot to do with it, but at the end of the day, it's it's an intuitive industry, and people and these carriers are are coming out with a price at the end of the day that they know that they can deal with, and would they like to get more? Certainly, and uh, but they're waiting for the other guy to drop the the shoe, so that kind hasn't like happened. Kind of gas station, I thought. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, when I started with my father, there were probably about eight different carriers that we worked with that specialized in public entities. And now there's about three, so it, it's, uh, and you know it, they all they all know what the other ones, what's what's up. All right. Okay, great. Well, thank you for making me number one on the list, and uh, okay. as a side note, <laughs> hope you got uh, Roscoe the Clown coming back again. Okay, for, yes, for this he, year. Steve was always our sponsor for Roscoe the Clown. Roscoe is. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm, I'm the chairman of our DDA in Mount Clemens, and uh, we. Uh, we beat up Roscoe all the time, so if, <laughs> if, uh, if I can uh, get him an event, uh, I'm happy to do that for him. So. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, entertain a motion. The premium is 106216. Make a motion to approve the proposal for property and liability insurance renewal from Nickel and Staff in the amount of 106216 
Support. Okay, motion and support. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Christy Hilton? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mike Bouchard? Yes. Sandy Kufel? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Next we have our... Uh, yep, thank you, Steve. Thanks for coming out. We have our uh, agreement. That's a tentative agreement so far. Uh, with Clay Township and uh, Michigan Association of Firefighters. Uh, we've been at this for over a year. Um, I believe it's a good contract. It's a fair contract. It, uh, um, and uh, it's before us right now to uh, pass it if, the, if that's the board's pleasure. Make a motion to approve the Michigan Association of Firefighters uh, tentative agreement as ratified on June seventh contract. Support. Yeah, motion and support. Um, any discussion or questions? Hearing none. I'm okay with it. What's that? Yes, I'm okay with it. Okay. Hearing none. Uh, roll call vote, please. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Sandy Kufel? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Okay, passes. Next we have uh, Resolution 2018-22, approve the 2018-19 fiscal budget for Clay Township. Make a motion to approve Resolution 2018-22, setting the 2018-19 Clay Township annual budget. Support. Okay, we have motion and support. Any discussion? I, I, I know that um, we were waiting on some numbers and, and things change. Um, I'll just make a, a movement and some conscious effort to delay our next budget year's workshop until we have some solid numbers. It's just a lot of information for a trustee like me who has other obligations to process in the matter of sure, I mean, we can four do days. That. It's just a lot. It's just, it's, it's almost too much. It's right. an overwhelming amount of material. It, um, it is, and I'll, I'll even tell you, right, I, we still don't have all our budget, our numbers. I still don't have the work orders for our roads. I mean, I, you guess on some stuff. I, I, I get it. But, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of forecasting involved. But. Okay, we have motion and support. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Sandy Kufel? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. All right, next we have resolution 2018-23, uh, supervisor salary. I make a motion to approve resolution 2018-23 for supervisor salary of the office. Support. Okay, a motion in support. Any discussion? So we're raising the... Uh, base salary of 40000 to 42000 yep. which is about a 5% increase for that, that uh, base, just so that the people in TV land know. <clears throat> okay, any, uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Sandy Kufel? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Okay, we have a uh, motion 2018-24 for clerk's salary. And a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2018-24 clerk's salary. Support. Okay, a motion to support. Any discussion? I, I have just some clarification that I would like to know about and maybe a discussion. But there's two parts to this resolution. One that 
involves raising the 40,000 to 42,000 uh, per annum for the clerk. And then there's another one that is to provide a stipend payment of $500 per required election held this to be paid to the clerk. And I, I don't quite understand that because the election is part of the statutory duties and raising the uh, 40,000 to 42,000 goes to the statutory duties. So I, I'm a little confused with that. Well, the reason why I broke it out of there is because typically we have two elections every other year. The last three years, the clerk's office has been hit with three elections a year, which is not just the election day, but the Saturdays before the election. Theoretically, next year, we should have no elections. But the last three years, with the schools running the millage, basically it's just a buffer for the clerk, whether it be me or anybody else. When you get in those cycles where you're, you can have up to four elections a year, which is a lot of work, and it takes away from doing everything else you're doing, puts in a lot more hours of overtime. Obviously, the office of the clerk doesn't get any overtime but I still have to work those hours. So in discussing it on an MTA board, some of the clerks have done this um, and recommended breaking out election from the rest of the salary of the office. Being as it's not something that is done specifically to a year, for a year, some years there's none. Which, which is why I, I'm yeah. questioning or wanting a clarification yeah. on it, that's all. I understand. Yeah. Any more discussion? Yeah, I, I'm, I think that something has to be, I'd like to see an underlining um, number of elections that come with the statutory duty. So if, if we could have a discussion on if that's zero a year, if that's one a year, if that's two a year, because I can see both sides of this deal. Mm -hmm. So I see that our elections are a, a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Do I want to run them? No, no, I'm not that guy. I'm not. However, that being said, if, if we set the bar at one, one election a year, and, and that's the statutory. Now, anything after one election, you know, I support the additional stipend to, to uh, I'm not a big stipend guy anyway. So I, I want to get that on the table. Okay, I don't like the stipends. I think it confuses me and a whole lot of other people. But that being said, I think there's part of the statutory duty that requires our clerk to run an election. Um, does it require her to run three elections at the same rate? No, I don't know. I don't think so. I think that validates something, some kind of a stipend, some kind of a supplement, <clears throat> something. So where that middle ground is is what I'd like to discuss, what's, what's fair, what's, what's appropriate, you know, I, and, and those are long days. I get it. They're, you know, 14, 16, 18 hour days for, for the clerk and, and some staff people, and it's a lot to hold together. I just don't know in my mind maybe where the middle ground is. Well, so, I, I, as far as the n number of elections, you can have four a year. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, any like schools or or, or county or, or state anyone can petition for an election okay um, there's a, a but this year we know we have an August one for the primary and a November one for the gubernatorial election um, I doubt if there'll be a May one because this you know those are typically schools yep in school one. and uh, um, so uh, we know we're gonna have two this coming year which is a statutory duty. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, this was in the resolution for the statutory mm -hmm. duties, excuse me, duties of the office. So, so am, I, am I on the right track? Does anybody follow my logic there? It, well, there's just no it, way to predict how many elections, and that's my whole point. I mean, sometimes, some years there are no elections. Some years there's four elections. Um, I get it. I get it. And, and on those years that our clerk has to work for elections, I want the clerk to be compensated for something for that. I get it. I, I want that to happen because I know that's a lot of work. But on the years that there's one election 
in my mind, that's part of our clerk's duty. So, I mean, I, I would even propose something as low as one a year, that, that we require our clerk to run one a year as part of their statutory. We have to set precedent here. Well, the statutory is to run all elections. I understand yes. that. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to work with our clerk and future clerks. Because I do but understand see, that's a state the law. They, we, then we don't have anything to do with running the elections. The state decides that's whether what we have does, per. elections. Yeah. You know, we can't just say, "Well, we'll have one election a year." I, I understand that part. Yeah, okay. Okay. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I just I know what we spend in elections. I know what we've approved as a board on special equipment. Um, I, I know some of the things that we've done. We, we haven't left the elections department out in the cold. Right. We haven't turned our backs to it or the process. I, I would just like to see, you know, in, in my mind, it's, it's one. I, I could support anything after one election. I, I could, in my mind, certainly justify some of the extra work, but that's me. So would you, how would you change that, be it resolved that the Clay Township Board shall provide a stipend payment of $500 per required election? It's per election. If there's no election. no election, it's no money. There's no money. I get it. Okay. Yeah. I get it. So we just have to set the bar. At, at We require a one and anything after one. So you're proposing it say well, something. And I also have the same thing in for the deputy clerk. Okay. Which I've calculated her current wage. Yeah. You know, versus overtime she gets paid for all those hours. Yep. So it comes out to within twenty dollars of that this year. She gets a raise next year. I get you know? it. So that's just the overtime hours that she puts in outside of election day, just in overtime for and, each election. And she's a union employee, right? Yes. Right. But so I'm saying that's not her running the election or the hours I that I have to put in for the election. That's just the hours that she works in overtime outside of during the day here. During the day here, she does some of the election stuff, obviously, with her union pay as part I, of her I, I know that it sort of ties into this, but I want to tackle that issue separately. Yes. Yeah, that's a different ball game there. Yeah. Does the statutory duties as written describe any amount of hours to be put in for elections? No. no. So what is... Well, somewhat. They, so, you're required to be open on a couple Saturdays. Yeah. You have to be open so, the Saturday so. before the election, and you have to um, take everything to the county at the end of election night. Right. So when I close down at 1130, 12 o'clock, I still have to drive all the way up to Port Huron to drop off all my election paperwork and drive back. But didn't they give you special permission to take it in the morning now this time only when that's just a school election just a school election and then it has to be there by 8 a.m so might as well take it the night. <clears throat> well i don't have a problem with that uh, stipend uh, as far as the elections right. are concerned okay well we can we can vote on it as it stands this is our time to discuss yep and then the next year we won't have any right Right. right. Probably. And how, how this is, it, it's it's a five hundred dollars stipend per election. So if there's no elections, there's no five hundred dollars stipend. Correct. So, but there is motion and support on that, so we have yep. to do something with that first. Will you have motion and support? Any more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Sandy Kufa. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Artie Bryson. Yes. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Bashar. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. All right. Next, we have the resolution 2018-25 treasurer's salary. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 2018-25 to set the annual salary of the township treasurer. Do we have support? Support. Do we have motion and support? Any discussion? Again, this is at 42. Uh, roll call vote, please. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Artie Bryson. Yes. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Bashar. Yes. Sandy Kufel. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Next we have, uh, let's see, 2018 26 
Approve the trustee salaries. Make a motion to approve resolution 2018-26 to set the annual salary of the township trustees. A motion, do we have support? Support. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Christy Hilton? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mark Bashar? Yes. Sandy Kufel? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Okay, moving right along. We have a uh, resolution 2018 27 approve the deputy stipends. Make a motion to approve resolution 2018 27 to set the annual deputy stipend. Do I have a second? I'll support it to get it so we can have discussion. a discussion. Okay, we have motion and discussion. Is she on an hourly wage? Yes. So why can't we just use general overtime rates? Um, for one, it's difficult to budget. Mm -hmm. Oh, just for budget. budget Primarily budget. for budget. Okay. I think Cindy yeah. calculated, didn't you, mm -hmm. on, on what it is when it's mm -hmm. all over and done with. And it's within 20 bucks of the 500. So what if she works more? This is in lieu of all overtime. But doesn't that put us in breach? Or... She's a union employee. This is, but her being the clerk has nothing to do with her union job. Yeah, it's a non-union. Her deputy clerk, it's non-union. Right. She gets a salary for, she is able to have the authority of the clerk's office when the clerk is not here. The deputy duties are outside the union contract. I mean, so the, the deputy stipends. Are you, are you certain on that? Yeah. Like 100%. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yep. The deputy yes. stipends are not in the union contract, in the pay scale at all. It's not even talked about at union negotiations. Because everybody in the contract isn't a deputy either. Right. We have to have a deputy. By state law. By state law. Sticky wicket. <laughs> way it's set up. I mean, that's the way state the state, Michigan. the state, you know. And, and I'm, listen, yeah. I'm, and I'm still learning, so I have to yeah. question Oh, no, things. that's fine. No, that's, that's fine. So you'll have to forgive my ignorance, but mm -hmm. the law is, you know, not one of my specialties when it comes to. Okay. Any more discussion? Terry Nunn, roll call vote, please. Oh, I'm not even sure I left off. Artie Bryson. Sure, yes. Cindy Valentine, yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Sandy Kufel. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Christy Hilton. No. Okay, uh, motion passes. We have 2018-28, approve the stipends for park and rec coordinator. Entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve resolution 2018-28 to set the annual parks and rec coordinator stipend. Support. Okay, we have motion to support, and this is just like all the other uh, deputies, uh, from 3200 to 3264 dollars, so $64 a year raise. Um, any discussion, any more discussion? When you say it was just like all the other deputies, is that percentage driven? Yes. Figure? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mark Richard? <clears throat> yes. Sandy Kufal? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, 2018 29, approve the stipend for FOIA coordinator. Make a motion to approve resolution 2018 29 to set the annual FOIA, FOIA coordinator stipend. Of what? Can you put that in? Say what it is? For $1,050. What was it? Can you describe uh, four year? One thousand. Okay. FOIA. Freedom of so, Information Act. Any requests that come to the township. All right. 
<coughs> excuse me for public information. Um, currently, Cindy Babish is the FOIA coordinator, so she fields all of those. And we get several a year. Did somebody second that? Do we have a second? Support. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Sorry about that. Motion and support. Any more discussion? These are outside the list of, of contract responsibilities. This is a, this is another is this another union employee? We're treating this the same way as we're treating a yeah, by law we election. had to we had to appoint somebody to be a FOIA coordinator. Mm -hmm. That's outside the building coordinator's duties. All right, roll call. Any more discussion? Was there a change from last year? Yes, it went up 50 bucks from 1,000 to 1,050. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Sandy Cupo. Yes. Krista Regan. Yes. Christy Hogan. Yes. Hardy Bryson. Yes. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Hey, motion passes. Next, we have an appointment and contract uh, for. Our soon to be new assessor, Sherry Lawton, effective 7 1 2018. Make a motion to approve the appointment and the contract for um, Sherry Lawton. I can say assessor, but we haven't made that official yet. Support. Yeah, motion and support. Any discussion? I'd just like to say that. Um, have all the confidence in the world that Sherry's going to do a good job, and uh, she's got big shoes to fill. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure she'll. Yes, I have, yeah, I'm. No worries on me. And she had a good teacher. She had a good teacher. Plus a lot of school school and learning. A lot of school, lot of school lot of learning. Of school. Yeah. Okay, any more discussion? It's a one-year contract. It is because all of the township contracts are up next year. So we'll redo them all at that point. Roll call vote, please. Uh, Sandy Kufel. Yes. Krista Regan. Yes. Christy Hilden. Yes. Artie Bryson. Yes. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. A okay, motion passes. Next, we have. Uh, a uh, contract for uh, Chief Rose as our fire chief and fire official. I'll make a motion to approve the fire chief Clay Township contract, i.e. George Rose. Support. Motion and support. Any discussion? This has hands full, but he's doing a good job. So. This is a one year also. One year. Okay, uh, no more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Uh, Artie Bryson. Yes. Cindy Valentine, yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Sandy Kufel. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Christy Hillman. Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have a purchase of badges for the fire department and uniforms. Um, we didn't put anything in here. Do you, do you have anything for us, George? Yeah, yeah come on up. What, what it was, he's got a lot of room in this year's budget. Okay. And so we rather spend the money on this year's budget instead of going forward. And uh, take it away, George. Well, yes. Before you do, George, I just want to point out this is part of the requirements from the contract that we just passed. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So <clears throat> for uniforms and uniforms, and clothing this is a allowance. pair of pants, a duty shirt. Uh, a duty, uh, or I should say, a pair of pants, a uh, duty shirt, um, a um, I'm trying to think of the work shirt, work shirt, and a uh, t shirt. And we're looking at uh, around $184 per uh, firefighter. So, is so that just for the uniform part, or what about the badges? That's just for the uniform part. And then the badge uh, is uh, about $125 for the badge and the nameplate because we have to provide them also with a nameplate for their uniform. What? 
Times how many, Chief? Uh, that would be about 30 right now. So we're looking at uh, about uh, 3,750 for badges, and then the uniforms would be about 5520. And badges, I assume, can be used year after year yes. after year. And as they resign or they quit, we can reissue them to. And Michael. the uniforms, though, that would be on an annual expense? Uh, yes. Or as they wear out, I would think. Yeah, as needed. As yeah, needed. We, yeah, we have to provide them, but you know, right. it's not a yearly thing. If they still have them and they're in good shape, we don't have to replace them. If they get tore or ripped or something, then we could replace, or wore out, then we could replace them. Okay. So the two, the badges and the uniforms would be close to $10,000 for both of them? Yes. Yep. So you just say we- Not to exceed? Not to exceed 10000 for the badges and the uniforms. And then that way we yep. got a little leeway. Is that a motion? It's a motion, yes. Support. Okay, we have motion and support to purchase uh, badges and uniforms for the fire department not to exceed $10,000. Do we have any more discussion or questions? Oh, I gotta do do we have... Uh, I know. Do we have specific uniform requirements and specialized BDU pants and they come from this manufacturer and they're this color and? Yes, we're gonna go through one company. Uh, and so we're uniform, so we don't get them from different. Fantastic. So mm -hmm. that's what our plan is. Great. To look very professional. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we do our new badge yet? Working on that. All right, we have motion and uh, support. Any more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mark Bashar? Yes. Sandy Kufo? Yes. Chris Arriga? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Ernie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Next, we have uh, fire department hose uh, and ground ladder testing. 47.49.50 cents. That will be on next year's budget. Make a motion to approve the hose and ground ladder testing for four thousand seven hundred forty-nine fifty for two thousand eighteen nineteen budget. Support. An annual deal, Chief. Yes, sir. Yep. About always about the same price. Yep. It hasn't changed from last year. Hopefully, it'll go down once we uh, start liquidating some of our vehicles. What did I? No, you're gonna make a requirement for your. your Team members just show up and insist on that. That's a big deal, isn't it? Well, we have a company that comes in and does it. Oh, they will. For us. They'll do it for us. Yep. Is that when when they shut down yes. Muskrat Run yes. last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They'll come in and they'll do the host testing and the ladder testing all in the same day, <coughs> and then at the end, we'll get a uh, certificate stating that uh, it's been tested and meets uh, NFPA requirements. Great. To, to buy the equipment and do that in house, we're probably looking at what thirty, forty thousand, or close to that. Maybe and more. then the time to do it. Yeah, the time to do it. Yep. And then cert and then have it certified. Right. Okay. Yeah. They, yeah. Like I say, they give us, they guarantee it. Yep. For us. It's a third party, so you get somebody that comes in that certifies it, other than us. Okay. Are we on item sixteen? Yes, we skip fifteen. We're yeah, go I'll, I'll go back. Okay. <laughs> Just. <laughs> what did we miss? The helmets. 15. Oh. 15. <laughs> good, good. Are we ready for a vote? <laughs> yep. Any more questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have going backwards from 16 to 15 is the purchase of helmets and shields for the amount of $1,396. Make a motion to purchase helmets and shields at the cost of $1,396. Support. A motion to support. Any questions or discussions? Hearing none. All in favor by signifying by uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Next, we have uh, authorization of fireworks at 3320 South Channel Drive for June 30th, 2018. I know uh, Chief went and talked to him and. Uh, and we're all set there. It's yeah, I just got a text for her. I just got an email from him with his license. 
and uh, his application. Okay. And I spoke to him about the distances that spectators need to be away. I believe last year there was a storage issue. Yes. Is that taken care of? Yes. This is, I think, the third year we've, we've he done. He always does it. Yeah. I was going to say it's an annual he's event, he's isn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We've never had any issues, so. I'll make a motion to approve fireworks at 3320 South Channel on June 30th with a backup date of July 4th. Support. Okay, we have motion to support. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone oppose? Okay, motion carries. I like fireworks. Resolution 2018-30, authorizing a special assessment bonds. This is for the county water project. If you recall, we had our council here last meeting, uh, both our legal and our uh, bonding council that went through it. Make a motion to approve resolution 2018-30, authorizing special assessment bonds. Support. A motion and support. Any discussion? A lot of it hinges on how the bids come back and which one we award as far as the actual costs. And uh, you know that's dealt with in here. And um, also how we're gonna do the bonds. We're gonna uh, make it so we can pay it off early because we think a lot of people are going to uh, Pay that lump sum? Yeah, pay a lump sum so we don't get stuck paying interest on interest it. for 19 years when we're not collecting interest. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we have motion and support. Any more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Sandy Kufo? Yes. Chris Arigas? Yes. Christy Hilden? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. A motion passes. I think we have like we are we, 32 on the whole thing. We're doing like a dozen of them tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Lazy Lane Special Assessment Resolution Number Four. Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve Resolution Number 2018-31 for Lazy Lane Special Assessment Resolution Number Four. To support. 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 Okay, a motion to support. Any discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote, please. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Sandy Kufo. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Artie Bryson. Yes. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Okay. We have resolution 2018-32, adopting ordinance amendment number 128. Dash one for land division. This what more or less cleans up our our ordinance to coincide with the state um, land division act. Am I right? Uh, we have five tweaks in uh, language, and uh, we had our uh, attorney look at it, which her opinions in in here and. Uh, she was all for it, and uh, so now it's before us. I'd like to make a resolution that we approve. Resolution number 2018-32, adopting ordinance amendment number 128-1 to land division ordinance number 128 of Clay Township. Support. Okay, we have motion and support. I think you meant you wanted to make a motion, not make a resolution. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you said resolution. Okay. I would like to make a motion thank thank you for correcting him Joanne. thank you to support resolution 2018 Got a little ahead of myself That's easy. That's thanks easy trustee okay we we do have uh, motion and support now yes any discussion hearing none roll call vote please sandy kufo yes chris o'regan yes christy hilton yes Artie bryson yes cindy valentine yes joanne shirky yes mark Bouchard. yes a hey, motion passes Next, uh, we'd like to uh, the board to give authorize the treasurer to amend any line items in the budget. And with this is, um, if any of our uh, our funds are out of whack, it's uh, basically it's easier for us to amend the budget now than to do a whole list of paperwork afterwards. 
and uh, saves us a lot of work and audit, auditor's expense and uh, any changes that would be made will be brought to our attention and the auditors, so. For approval, right? For approval. Make a motion to authorize the treasurer to amend line items to balance the budget. Support. A motion and support. Any discussion? So you say I it's checked and balanced? So our treasurer has the opportunity to amend it? Yes. To, and then bring it to your attention? Uh, well, attention? She, she's going to go ahead and, and, and do the amendments, and, yep. and then we'll, we'll, we'll report back if we had to do any. But, yeah. you know, between now and July 1st, you know, we, we don't know exactly where the numbers lay, if, yeah. if we have to tweak any or not, and we'll know in a week. Um, and uh, we'll do any tweaking if necessary. And, and with our competent treasurer, I'm sure it will be accurate. Oh, yes. Because many times, many years, I remember, I could never get it right. Do we have a motion? And support. Yeah. yeah. We have motion and support? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any discussion? Mark made the motion and Joanne supported. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. All right. 21 items. Very good. Next, we have board member comments. Cindy. Um, I want to congratulate Assessor Sherry Lawton on her new position. So congratulations. Congratulations. Um, and also our Clay Township firefighters for ratifying their contract. Mm -hmm. Good job. Okay. Mark? Yeah, congratulations uh, to the firefighters and uh, the negotiators, Cindy and Artie, for ratifying the uh, 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 fire department contract. And, and congratulations to Sherry as well. Good job. Thank you. I don't have much to say tonight. You don't? <laughs> Feel okay? Yeah, I said it all at the meeting. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Sandy? I know everyone worked very diligently and hard for a very long time on that contract, so I'm glad to be moving on. That's all I got. Thank you. Chris? Yeah, I'm just going to follow up on that. I was saying that was a lot of effort and a lot of due diligence um, acting on behalf of the township by the three of you. I mean, already Cindy and Christy, and um, I appreciate and commend your efforts. Um, Chief, I'm glad you're in that spot. And, and I, I thank the firefighters for looking over, reviewing and approving or ratifying their contract. So hopefully we can, we can start the, uh, the bonding process and shore, shore this thing up a little bit moving forward. I just want to say congratulations to Sherry, and I look forward to working with you. Yes, congratulations to Sherry. She's already redecorating, redecorating Barb's office. <laughs> Has anyone claimed Barb's parking spot yet? No. <laughs> okay, that's, that's going to be up for grabs. First come, first serve, I'm sure. And uh, yes, um, I'm uh, also like to... Uh, Congratulate George. He's got a new contract and job well done, and we're getting there. And uh, lots of positive things happening in our township, Absolutely. I must say. Absolutely. So that's uh, always a good thing. Spent lots of money tonight. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks for coming, everybody.